What a picture, a work of art, and that's what Lomity has been all day. And now as the sun begins to set, we play our final game here on this beautiful venue. Field of Dreams for the Little Leaguers, where New Jersey and Oregon are set to play their opening round game. It's coming up. First pitch in a moment. Dreams, the Little League World Series. Look at the green grass. And then you see the hedges behind the second wall here. You hit it over the first one, you get a homer. You hit it over the second one, you've done something big. About 250 feet out there. And the Mid-Atlantic team certainly has the guys that can do that. As we take a look at our division at a glance before this game between Sprague Little League out of Salem, Oregon, and Elmora Youth Little League from Elizabeth. New Jersey. Division of Little League International, 16 teams are here. And the boys and girls ages 10 to 12. Minimum mandatory play means you're getting in. And we look forward to seeing how this one unfolds between New Jersey and Oregon. All right, earlier today, Rossi, we had some significant Virginia no-hit Rhode Island. They used three different guys, all of them eligible to pitch on Sunday. Yeah, they look really good. Powerhouse team definitely coming out of that game. They look really sharp and prime to win this thing and go deep. South Korea scored 10 runs, they win. Minnesota, terrific. They made four errors and still won. Jamison Kuznia, four and two thirds innings pitched, five Ks. Japan, yeah, they're back and they're back with a vengeance. They hammered Italy by 20. Hawaii in a really tight game, survived a basis loaded situation in the sixth inning and hang on to beat Louisiana. And that gets us set for the night game, the only one that is remaining to be played, New Jersey and Oregon. Right now, Mexico nursing a 3-0 lead. They are in the top of the sixth inning. Mexico at the plate. You can see it on ESPN News. All right, New Jersey and Oregon. This should be a lot of fun. When you think about Oregon, you got to think about the Moon Brothers. And uh, we've seen a lot of twins and brother combinations, and these two will have to perform really well against a mid-Atlantic team that comes in as a real power. Yeah, Henry and Andrew are, are the two that are going to really make this group go. As they go, so does the Oregon team. They're brothers. They push each other. Andrew threw a no-hitter earlier this year. Hit his first home run. Henry's a great shortstop. Made a great play in that. He's the stronger one. The other's a faster one. These right. two are going to have to play well. They're going to be tested because the Mid-Atlantic team is coming off a regional in which they lost a game, and then they sort of found another gear. And whether it's Yadi Mateo or any of the other guys that they put on the mound, there's just a presence, a power about them. Well, they can hit, but they'll tell you their pitching is going to be their strength, and it starts with Yadi Mateo. He's on the mound today, a true presence. Guy signing autographs already, haven't even played an inning here at the Little League World Series. He's strong, but he can pitch. Great arm, knows how to pitch. He's a team clown, always asking the coach if he can play shortstop fun kid great personality from this group chick-fil-a meeting the player his favorite player is javier baez three homers in three games and his family is from puerto rico earlier julie got a chance to catch up with the man that runs the madness all right coach you get the final first game friday night game how hard has it been to contain a bunch of 11 12 year olds before this one i mean there's been a lot of late nights uh, a lot of flatulence uh <laughs> A lot of uh, a lot of uh, fake sleeping and, and uh, one eye open and 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 me sitting in the middle of a, uh, a room full of 13 boys making all types of noise and I mean we laugh when I go in the coach's room and, and we talk about it we take shifts uh, it's funny some of the things but we we just want to play baseball we're excited to finally play. What do you love most about this team as you think of them going into their first game? Uh, I mean I, I've said it before and this team is just a gritty uh, tough. A uh, bunch of fighters. I mean, they represent our city of Elizabeth and and the state of New Jersey so well. I mean, and that and that's what's so special about them. Uh, you know, they, they're hard workers, just like their parents, uh, the community. And, uh, and and we've said it before. Like we're we're playing for each other and we're playing for our city. I love it. Best of luck tonight. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Hi, Ro Labrador, and you can tell why he's a really good coach. Phys Ed teacher's got a son on the team. There is some madness that goes around. You're dealing with these kids in a in a grove like that after a, a month. It feels like a month. And the personality of this group is strong. They they like to have fun. They are they are one powerful group. All right, last of seven. We are set for that one. El Mora, youth out of New Jersey and Oregon. Coming up when we come back. Welcome back. What a unique scene. That is the hill here at Lomity. 
and you never get tired of seeing all the fans with those chairs with the backs that are cut off so you can fit into the hill as we get set for the first pitch and our final night of this really what feels like the opening day given that yesterday was rained out on the United States side the kids from El Mora Youth Little League been told it's exit 13A off the turnpike 15 miles southwest of New York City they nicknamed themselves the Troopers. We'll tell you why over the course of the game. And who's from there? A lot of good people. Kyrie Irving and Hubie Brown, perhaps two of the more well-known ones. But this is a uh, city that takes a heck of a lot of pride in itself. There's Hyro Labrador. We take a look at the lineup that he's sending out there. It's presented by Office Depot. My name is Justin Labrador, and my favorite emoji is the money sign. My name is Emily Soto, and my favorite subject is math. My name is Jamie Tamayo, and my favorite emoji is the one where you roll your eyes. My name is Josiah Sharp, and my favorite actor is Will Smith. My name is Ben Nunez, and my favorite food is fried chicken. My name is Sal Garcia, and my favorite emoji is a strong arm. My name is Jay Rosetta, and my favorite baseball player is Marion Rivera. My name is Sancy Alvarez, and my favorite actor is Denzel Washington. My name is LJ Aponte, and my favorite baseball team is the Yankees. My name is Joel Sanchez, and my favorite player is Gary Sanchez. My name is Jaden Capendisa, and my favorite actor is Chadwick Boseman. My name is Yadi Mateo, and my favorite team is the Houston Astros. My name is Derek Escobar, and my favorite player is Derek Jeter. Lost to Washington in the Mid-Atlantic's 8-7, and after that, they outscored Maryland, Pennsylvania, Washington, and New York 32-5 including a 19-4 drubbing of New York in the regional championship game that got him here. Cameron Van Kempen is on the mound. Five earned runs in a game, four strikeouts, five innings pitched. He's got to be tested early. Sal Garcia leads things off for New Jersey. They are an aggressive approach team. Cameron Van Kempen, a kid, they have the four horsemen. He's one of their pitchers they use. This guy's a lot of movement, curveball, changeup. He's got the kitchen sink. Jam shot right back up here. And ahead 0-2 is Van Kempen. That'll get us locked in. That was a foul ball right at me. <laughs> Second pitch. Like the foul ball off the mask in the yeah, second I guess pitch of the game. Here we go. Yeah, get right into it. Guess we started. <laughs> Good pitch, Garcia strikes out, breaking pitch from Cameron Van Kempen. <laughs> Mom is fired up. Yeah. You can tell the pressure these parents put on them. They've waited a long time to get to this Little League World Series, had to wait to this last game. A lot of energy for the parents, just as well as the kids. J.R. Rosado, he's a catcher, he's also a pitcher on this team, and he fouls off the first one. Yeah, you talk to the coaches and they talk about their great defense, especially up the middle. And JR is a guy they really lean on to catch. They say all the defense starts with him. He is the guy that kind of runs this defense and is in control. And Kempen on the mound is an 11 year old at 5'4, 107. Oh. It was hit hard. You see the entire uh, left side. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> this view that we have here is one of the most amazing things. I'm getting so excited just locking into this. But that ball is hit down the left side, and the whole left grandstand just got up on their feet. That was great. They traveled in huge numbers to Bristol for their regional, and they have followed Look here. Look Everybody. We got the best seat in the house. Whoa. Nice stop there from Riley Wilson. Rosado is a 12-year-old, 5'3", 125. He plays ping pong for the first time in a year. But he's getting his feel back, and that's a big activity up there in the Grove. Hey. Hey. Oh, I heard the strike, and I was waiting <laughs> for the rest of it. And we got a strike. Three. That was a little, <laughs> little bit of delay there from our umpire, Anthony Estrada. <laughs> he liked this one, sized it up a little bit late. No reaction. Here it is. Him. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Crowd roars Yachty. for Yachty Mateo. Oh. Obviously, a 5'11", 231-pound 12-year-old will garner a lot of attention. Everyone who knows him says he's kind of a big teddy bear out there. I got to get we got to get the stats on the catcher because the, the size difference between Yachty and the catcher <laughs> this is like it's like me and Kirkshin up here. I mean this is <laughs> it's a big difference. Riley Wilson behind home is 4 9 and weighs 79 pounds. Yachty right field fair ball. He starts off his World Series by reaching base with a single and there you go. <laughs> Mom loves it. He's going to be tough to get out. If he's got this type of plate coverage, and we know what kind of hitter he is, but watch him go down and stay on this ball nicely, just throwing the hands. He is a mature kid, knows how to hit, and knows how to <laughs> shake it. Hey. Jaden Capendisa, who pitched well in the regionals, steps in with Mateo at first. I don't know if you guys can feel it, but this, this New Jersey fans are really into every pitch. You get, feel their energy in this stadium. They are loud. Good job by Van Kempen to get ahead here of Capendisa 0-2. Breaking ball, slow roller with some spin, but no problem. Andrew Moon steps on second, and that does it. Big Yachty goes to the mound. Oregon comes to the plate when we come back to the Little League World Series. We are back. Check out the Northwest Regional right above the West. And you got Alaska, Idaho, Montana, Oregon, Washington, and Wyoming. We pay tribute to all those teams that made it through their state championships. Sitka, Alaska, congratulations. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. This was the home to the great Dave Campbell, he used to work on baseball tonight. Billings, Montana, a state champion. Out of Washington, team from Buffalo, and Gillette, Wyoming. The big G on the hat. Salem, Oregon. Quite a story to see these kids here out of Sprague Little League. As you take a look at the first team from Salem to represent Oregon in the Little League World Series, about 45 miles south of Portland. Chad Lowry, Ryan Allen out of Salem, Oregon. Time now to meet the kids, and the lineup is presented by Office Depot. My name is Riley Wilson, and my favorite actor is Will Ferrell. My name is Thomas Van Bichler, and my favorite food is salmon. My name is Henry Moon, and my favorite food is French fries. My name is Cameron Van Kip, and my favorite subject at school is art. My name is Sullivan Puckett, and my favorite app is Instagram. My name is Andrew Moon, and my favorite food is cheeseburgers. My name is Jacob Hoda, and my favorite app is ESPN. My name is Spencer Shortis, and my favorite emoji is the fish emoji. My name is Avery Lorman, and my favorite emoji is the ghost. My name is Aiden Sale, and my favorite food is tacos. My name is Carson McNally, and my favorite food is watermelon. My name is Gavin Price, and my favorite game is Minecraft. My name is Brady Strenke, and my favorite emoji is a crying laughing emoji. The emo How's your emoji game? I'm strong. My text game emoji <laughs> game is strong. Strong to quite strong. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> Feeling good about the emoji game. If you were to have an emoji of Yadi Mateo, what would it be? It'd be the muscle, right? He's the big kid, the flamethrower, the fire. I give him the fire. That says Yadi. It's a little upside down, but yeah, the fire with a little strong emoji, with maybe a little hands out because he's jiggling when he hit, gets a hit, <laughs> gets a little dance moves. Well, this is the matchup we just saw with Yadi on the mound and the opposing catcher at the plate, Riley Wilson, four nine seventy nine. Versus 100 at 231 on the mound at 511. There's a little Edwin Diaz type step there that he does with that front foot, almost kicks the ground on his delivery. And he's ahead 0 and 2. This one's slow roller. It's fielded. No, it's not. It was a tough play. Garcia and Escobar both were coming for it. And instead, an infield hit for Riley Wilson. Good start. 
You talked about it. Just a soft hit jam shot there by Wilson. Tough to make a play on. I don't know they had a shot at it either way. Tears. Mom's fired up. <laughs> Riley's mom. <laughs> Tears for Kelsey Wilson. A lot of emotion. <laughs> You're right, Carl. Yachty's kind of a crossbody stepping at the right-handed hitter. It's going to be tough. Those guys are extremely tough to hit. You got to be patient, too, before you, as a broadcaster, say ball or strike. Because the strike calls very, <laughs> very delivered from Anthony Estrada. <laughs> Took a little bit something off that, and Andrew Moon strikes out. Henry Moon, I should say. That crossfire, especially on a breaking ball, that breaking ball starts right at Moon's head. Look at how where he's coming in your big front side and then the breaking ball. That is tough to stay on. I faced a guy by the name of Jake Arietta one time that oh, used to oh. throw it. Looked like he's throwing it behind you and then throws that cutter all the way around. Tough to stay on those pitches from a right-handed hitter. So Henry to Andrew Moon. He's the shortstop. Made the final out in the top of the first inning. Got to fix the helmet. Foul ball went right off of it. J.R. Rosado. For the Sprague Little League team out of Salem, Oregon. Oregon makes it to Wigan Fort for the seventh time. Their first appearance since 16. They haven't had a great deal of success when they've gotten here at 6-13 and 13 all time and 1-8 and eight in their last three appearances since 2012. What they did in the regional. Montana, Idaho, Idaho. And some close games, they give up some runs, there's no doubt about it. But so far, so good through one. And here's the one to Andrew Moon, off-speed pitch. That one's high for a ball. Rossi's thrown nine pitches, and eight of them have been strikes. Yeah, he's coming right at you. He, he, they, they talked about it. He's not just a thrower with a big, strong arm. He knows how to pitch. And you see the catcher. He sets up in, sets up away. J.R. Rosado all over the place back there behind the dish. Full moon. Both moons get struck out. <laughs> I think me and you might get struck out right now. <laughs> this is a nasty slider. Look at the knuckle curve he's got, the spike curveball he throws. Just Andrew Moon has a tough time staying on that pitch. Chant and Yachty in the first inning of the World Series. Pretty cool. <laughs> Here's Gavin Price, 5'8", 129. Swing and a miss. Kind of interesting. Started the first pitch out of the stretch, and now he goes to the windup, mixing up his windup and stretch. And you see most of these right-handed hitters stepping in the bucket because of that funky delivery. It looks like he's throwing from behind you. It makes you want to bail on that front side. Hard to hit that breaking ball away. Setting up fastballs in to breaking balls away already. This guy knows how to pitch. Back to the stretch. Oh. A little low. After giving up the single infield single to Riley Wilson, Henry Moon, Andrew Moon, strikeout victims, and now Gavin Price, a fellow pitcher himself who knows what it's like to throw a fastball and a curveball and a changeup. Oh. There's heat Bring just that low. Up, that was hard. <laughs> I think I was looking breaking ball. It even seemed even harder. I thought for sure he was throwing a breaking ball right there. 68 on a radar gun. A lot of folks have wondered where the radar gun is this year. That one came in at 68. He pulled that one. And now heading down to second base, Riley Wilson, and he will get in there standing up on a wild pitch. In order for that radar gun to light up, pitchers have to throw 70 miles an hour or above.
three two and that's fouled off. He took a little something off that. So if you throw 70, you're at 91 miles an hour, given that you are just 46 feet away as opposed to 60 feet away. Anything at the, the 60 to 70 gets on you real quick, really quick. Especially as big as he is, it feels like he's handed it to you. Another 3-2. And he strikes him out. After that opening single, he gets Moon, Moon, and Price. He strikes out three in the first and gets a little word of advice from Sal Garcia, which I assume is, I keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, it's like breaking, break, breaking ball, and now we go heater right by you. That's pitching. That's New Jersey on the minds of many. Welcome back, everyone. Lomity. That is the stadium the United States bracket is being played on. New Jersey and Oregon 0-0 in the top of the second. Mentioned going to break. There's a few people who have New Jersey and this Little League team on their minds. Let's let's meet another one. What's up, guys? Yankees manager Aaron Boone here. I just wanted to wish you guys the best at Williamsport. Go have the time of your life and... Uh, while you're at it, you may as well bring home the prize. Good luck, have fun, congratulations on making it this far. Uh, I'll be watching. See you, bud. Like, I think it was, you may as well bring home the prize. You're like, ooh, ooh. Okay, now he's getting real on us. And then he said, let's go. <laughs> Aaron Boone's team, the Yankees, in a uh, great series with the suddenly resurgent Red Hot Indians. And uh, the Yankees lead that game two to nothing. You'll get all the highlights of the Major League games and everything else on SportsCenter, which follows our game. So a good first inning with a couple of strikeouts for Cameron Van Kempen. Good first inning for Yadi Mateo. He struck out three. 14 pitches, 12 of them strikes for Van Kempen in the first. He'll face Derek Escobar, Justin Labrador, and Yamil Soto. Five, six, and seven in the order for New Jersey. Hey. Ball. Hiro Labrador, the manager here, talked to the parents before the season started, said these top five guys in my lineup will never come out. These guys got super power, Ball. big time power, can leave the yard at any moment. And it goes all the way down to the five hole and Derek Escobar, and this guy's one of them. Three balls. Huge numbers in the regional, 9 of 15. And he rolls that one foul. Mom, Georgina, and Dad, Delio. He's got a great story, he says. His parents met at a friend's wedding. There they are. He went over to her table and asked her out. Later on their first date, he ran out of gas and said, can you please push the car? <laughs> he we said, knew it was true love. He said, that. that's it, we're done. <laughs> and that was not the case. <laughs> Ooh. Can you please get out and push? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Huh? Triple A, anything, friend, phone a friend? No, you just get out and push. Escobar stays alive as he fouls that one back. You, you would have thought that perhaps Delia would have gotten out and said, uh, no, yeah. you get the wheel, I'll, I'll push. Right, no, nope, not the case. Is that a test? <laughs> Lead off walk and a good job by Derek Escobar with his patience and on base percentage. It's very high. They're going to get a special pinch runner as Jairo Labrador orchestrates that. Escobar comes out. It's amazing. A lot of times you think, you know what, I'm kind of bummed out. I got a special pinch runner for me, but it also means you got on base. And they're going back into that dugout celebrating the idea that I got on base, which is a really good job. You can see some of the kids coming over and telling Derek we need that. Yeah, it's easy to look at that as a negative, right? But coach has turned that to, into a positive. You've done your job. Come give some high fives. Ball. Ball one, Justin Labrador. He is the son of Hiro down there at third base. And he is a personality. When you talk to this group, this kid, heart at way bigger than his size. He is a fun kid to talk to. He's got the swag. You see the hair, the long blonde locks coming out the back. Ball after Noah Syndergaard. He's only 10. He's the only 10-year-old on the team. And right now 
he's ahead 3-0 as all of a sudden Van Kempen, who was so good in the first inning with his strike and ball ratio, has lost the strike zone a little bit. Iroh was once a baseball player too as he talks to his son and then as he said I outgrew my <laughs> baseball body and grew into my football body Maybe laugh when I read that that was funny. <laughs> Played football on the line defensive offensive line. Hey. This little word of advice from Spencer shortest third base maybe calming him down telling Cameron just focus on throwing it down the middle make him hit it. Oh. Little high two are on now. Back to back walks. I don't think that's going to be the formula for success here against this New Jersey team. They've got power up and down the lineup, and you guy can't give guys free passes. Got to make them earn it. Jamie Tamayo at second base is the special pinch runner and now Yamil Soto cool. and that one is wide as well. Anything you've noticed sort of mechanically at all from Van Kempen? No just a little bit rushing this inning. Yeah going to be a meeting here from the coach just slow him down. Hopefully he'll have maybe some mechanics advice for him. So the Oregon coaches are not wearing microphones so their conversation is going to be a little private but it looks like he's sitting there saying please just breathe a little bit. Take it slow. A little fist bump never hurts. You're looking for training videos for coaches and umpires? Get your free backyard tips, practice plans, drills, videos, and more. Visit littleleagueuniversity.org today. So what do we got there? Frozen ice, snow calling? What do you call that? I'm not talking about it because they always bring it up here and I don't want any more <laughs> You're snacks. Done eating. I'm done eating for the day. Yeah, Italian ice is what I call that, though. Right. right. I'm with you. After you got that from Mike Notaro, our resident Italian guy who knows a thing or two about Italian ice. He's, like, hey. He's keeping track of my snacks too. That list, we're, we're on page two. <laughs> In day one. In day one, page two. Two walks for Soto. And this one, a little blooper, just foul. And that was trouble off the bat. <laughs> Close your eyes. Oh gosh. Oh no. This is what this is what and that's a good word has consumed <laughs> Cliff Bar two Chick-fil-A's. I mean Oreos Oreos dipped yeah, in peanut that, butter. That's not even the real meal I'm eating up at the compound. That's right. <laughs> that doesn't take into account breakfast lunch or dinner. Hey there's no way there's only two Chick-fil-A's on there from yesterday. <laughs> I, I'm going to petition that one. Hey, they don't see the ones I take back to my room. <laughs> oh, goodness. I think I saw you pound about four. Uh, funnel cake. I'm all in on some funnel cake. <laughs> That's, that one you will mention. You like wave a wand what? and all of a sudden the, the food item comes out of your mouth then it goes into your mouth. That's a neat trick. <laughs> Chick-fil-A making its way. <laughs> That one misses and Soto will throw the bat after a walk. He wasn't sure of the call or the count. But we are loaded up now. Yeah, Cameron Van Kempen just hasn't found it this inning. Adrenaline settled down after that first inning. Sitting in the dugout, just can't seem to find his rhythm. Missing in and out. That tells me a lot about being rotational. Might make a pitch and change right here, looks like. Yeah, almost like he was looking in there. I got 31 pitches, and he kind of looked in and almost suggested, I'm ready to make a pitching change myself. And we are going to have a pitching change. So Van Kempen is taken out of the game. We'll see who's next. This New Jersey has him low. Chez is going to be a pinch hitter, and we do have a new pitcher on the mound. As New Jersey and Oregon has moved to the top of the second inning. Nobody out, and bases are loaded. Of Elmira Youth Little Leaguers. We've changed the pitcher in the center fielder. Coming in from center field is Gavin Price, coach yep. of the manager Travis Price. Mentioned the idea that he pitched the regionals, Rossi, fastball, curveball, change up. His best friend is his curveball. Yeah, coach talks about his baseline staying the same. He's a cool customer, really doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. Coach likes to put him in the spotlight because he knows he can handle it.
And you're coming into a spot in which it's a little warm right now with the bases loaded. Yeah, it's a tough, tough situation to come into, but coach got confidence in his son. First pitch, a little high, ball one. No, he didn't go. And they spot of Emmanuel Nunez, it's Joel Sanchez. Good fastball there from Price. Getting on Sanchez. His first swing of the day. Joel Sanchez's favorite player, Gary Sanchez. Why wouldn't it be? Right? As a catcher to himself. Tamayo's at third, Labrador at second. Off speed pitch. In there. That's a called strike. Coach telling him to freeze on the line drive, be heads up, nobody out. This is when base running is critical. Don't want to run yourself out of a big inning. What if it gets by him, right? They're not pinching behind. That's a run. Understand? Always teaching. Hey. Good pitch, strike three, and gone Ooh. with a bat on his shoulder. And the base is loaded, one down. Joel Sanchez. And a good, really good start for Gavin Price. What a boost for Oregon if Gavin could get out of this. Bases loaded, nobody out, mess. Send them to the bottom of the second. Still got some work left to do. Get some speed, too, here, and Josiah Sharp. That oh. ball gets away, and Tamayo's going to come in from third. He's going to score 1 0, New Jersey. A wild pitch is costly there. Tough one to block there for Riley Wilson. Looks like he just turned his glove over the wrong way. Tough, hardest pitch. You can see the disappointment on his face. Toughest pitch to block in baseball is that spiked fastball. That's in there for a strike to Sharp, who's the fastest player on this team. And he's a point guard, really good dribbler, shooter, and passer. Not a lot of weakness in the hoop game. <laughs> Fielded and we got to force it. No base oh, because now we got runners at second and third. They'll throw back to second and any one down and now heading home. And here's the throw home. Tag is made and even then a delayed call by the home plate umpire. A little base running miscue by Yamil Soto and that put a lot of pressure on Justin Labrador. Only one run for New Jersey with the bases loaded, no out situation. Hey Yachty, may we ask you a few questions? Sure. What's the last thing you ate? Tacos. Taylor ham or pork roll? Pork roll. Old Town Road or Hey Look Ma, I Made It? Uh, Old Town Road. Do you like the pool or the beach? The beach. Mets or Yankees? Mets, can I play? Yeah. Who's your favorite Mets player? Peter Alonso. Any reason why? Because he hits, sorry boys, because he hits dingers like me and plays first base. Can I play? Yeah. Ah, then we need to see your best home run celebration. Yep. See you, ball. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about Williamsport? Meeting new friends. Can I ask you a few more? No, sorry, got to play with my friends. See you, ball. See you, ball. <laughs> Just touch it. That's gone. <laughs> there he is. Look at that. He's got his own T-shirt. I need one of those. He's got three strikeouts, and we start the second inning. And the first hit of the game, he gives up. A nice piece of hitting. Spencer Shorts is aboard. They had a play at first base, but he was already across the bag. Let's go down to Julie. All right, Carl, I've got Yachty's mom, Dariana, with us. And Dariana, Yachty's already a rock star, as we're seeing around here. Everyone chanting his name. How special is it to see him living out his dream? Um, I think the dream is coming in here. He, he dreamed for coming in here. Um, I think 
He waited for three years ago. So now I'm happy for him. Um, I'm very nervous. <laughs> so um, I'm happy for him. There are, there are a lot of parents who are nervous, so don't worry about that. How proud you must be as a mom, though, to see him here. That one's down the line, Julie, and it's some trouble. Van Kempen, as the ball goes all the way towards the wall, everybody held up, but all of a sudden, Yachty's given up a couple of hits. Did you, the last thing I want to know, did you teach him that jersey shake he was doing? Uh -oh. I'm happy for the shake. <laughs> so I need it. It's not mom, Carl. She did not do the shake. I love the shake, but I'm not me. It's not you. Not me. Thank you so much. Enjoy the game. <laughs> not me. It's happened somewhere else. Well, now he's got a little trouble of his own, does Yachty Mateo. That momentum shift after getting out of that tough inning. Last inning, this Oregon team is fired up. Sullivan Puckett now up. Appeal to the first base umpire says yes, that is a swing on Puckett. You saw earlier today, Marshall Luke threw really hard, and Hawaii was all over the fastball. That one gets away, and all of a sudden, this game is tied at one. As Sports comes in, Shorts from third base. So wild pitches lead to both runs. Boys here, if you're this New Jersey group, the Oregon team is fired up. They're rolling, exciting. See a little bit of frustration on this New Jersey team here to start the bottom of the second. Sully is a 12-year-old, 5'4", 111 pounds. And the 1-1. Back up the middle over the head of Yachty. It's going to bring in the second run. The play at first, not in time. Infield hit for Sullivan Puckett. And they're getting in New Jersey right now and lead it two to one. We've talked about contact in this tournament, putting the ball in play against tough pitching. Sullivan does that very nicely, just getting the run in here, stays on it, makes contact over the head of Yachty. Tough play there for Soto. Run in. And now we hear the loud Oregon fans cheering. Hey, they're hit, making weak contact, bro. Pick your head up. Let's go after them. Let's go after them. Let's go. All right? Hey. Hey, we're going to go in there. We're going to get these out. And we're going in and hit. All right? Let's go. Come on. Hey, show good body language. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. So frustration for Yadi Mateo on the mound. He struck out three in the first after giving up the leadoff single. And in this inning, a single, a double, a wild pitch, and another single. Four hits in the game. Off Mateo. Carson McNally is the eight hole hitter. And he swings and misses at the first one. Big kid at the plate, Carson 5'10, 141. Behind 0-2, both Oregon coaches claiming perhaps that the bat of McNally hit the glove of J.R. Rosado. There was a definite contact with the bat, whether it was the glove or the ball. I think they're going to check. Let's watch here. No, it no. just ticked off the glove. The ball. I think you would feel that as the hitter for sure. You would look back right away. Didn't see that from Carson McNally. So not an official challenge here from Oregon. The umpire just asked for some clarification on it. And then it should take no time. But there is a chance for the New Jersey team to get together on the mound and talk things over and kind of calm things down. Yeah, just slow things down here a little bit. Just a replay of that swing. Plenty of space there in between. 
the glove and that swing from McNally. But I want to point out, Sal Garcia, one of the coaches, is big into analytics. We saw the breaking ball there from Yachty for the double, and the sh outfield was shifted all the way to the right. They like to move guys around thinking, hey, this guy throws hard. They're going to hit it to right field. They're going to be late like they've been for most pitch most pitches that they've swung at. But that cost them for a double really in the probably where normally the left fielder would be standing. There's I mean, Sal. Yep. He's got the big room here in Williamsport because of all the video work he does. Spreads himself out a little bit. McNally on a line in the left field and another hit for Salem, Oregon. Four consecutive hits. Just contact, making good contact. Not the prettiest swing we've seen, but out in front of this pitch here, getting ready, just trying to take Barrel to ball, just touch it <laughs> any way we can. Look at here. Just throw the hands at it, good things happen. Try to make contact. Nice job by Big Mac Carson McNally. He heads to the bench and gets a loud round of applause from the Oregon fans. Special pinch runner. Tommy Van Bischler now at first base. So first and second, and still nobody out. That was. That's the interference. Yeah. Look at that. Two. That one's called on Rosado. His glove hits the bat. Bases are loaded. More frustration for New Jersey right now. That's the sound you listen for. I knew that right away. You could tell where the ball came out and you hear it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's he a got lot plenty of, of that glove, too. yeah. So Rossi, the wheel's spinning a little quickly right now. Yeah, and you can see. Yanni Mateo really getting frustrated. Got to slow down, continue to pitch. These are those moments. Slow the heartbeat, slow the breath. Focus on each pitch. This Oregon team is a fighting team bunch, and they know coming in here, they are the underdogs. But they've got a rally going, that momentum shift of last inning. Force at every base. The middle of the infield is playing back. Ball one. And a little blooper in the left. It is caught out there. Oh, and the runner from up. third thought it was going to drop. And that is a double play. A big double play. Sullivan Puckett took off. Not perhaps realizing where the left fielder was. He's kind of slapping his helmet as he heads to the dugout. Yeah, nice job of putting the bat on the ball. You gotta freeze if you're the, at third base. If you're the third base runner, you gotta know it's gotta be down. You see him there freeze. He thought it was gonna hit, maybe hit a little bit softer, but you gotta make sure that ball gets down before you go. Boy, so both defenses Really helping out in big spots. We saw the double play to end the inning when New Jersey had all sorts of base runners on, and there's a big double play. And that one in there for a strike from Mateo. Limiting the damage on a 7-5 double play off the bat of Riley Wilson. Henry Moon's second chance. He struck out his first time up. Off speed to short. Flip to second, and that'll do it. So only two runs come in. It could have been a lot worse. That's the third. That's the third out. We got runners going everywhere, and that's the <laughs> third out. So much confusion. <laughs> <laughs> they did get the old bat on the ball, though, several times. Five hits, two runs. We're heading to the third, and Oregon leading New Jersey. Notre Dame head women's basketball coach Muffet McGraw. Little League wants to thank their official sponsors, Easton Baseball, New Era Cap, who helped maintain the strength and leadership of this Little League program. Little League also wants to thank the dedicated volunteers who make the program so special for the millions of children. Green shirts that are here, helping everybody direct traffic, the grounds crew, and the volunteers really do make this engine roar. And of course, the umpires, all volunteers as well. Done a really good job so far through day one. Long day for everybody. 
with four games on this field at Mominy, three down there at Volunteer. Hey. Here's New Jersey now batting top three. So all of a sudden you have really, I think, the ace of the staff and Gavin Price on. And he's got himself a lead. You get into that winner's bracket on this side. That's a huge Hi. step forward. No team has won coming out of the loser's bracket since they expanded to 16. Oh. Yeah, Gavin Price getting out Come of that bases time. loaded jam, only giving up one run, and that was on that wild pitch. Oh. A long, long way to go. This New Jersey team can definitely swing the bats. But the momentum has definitely gone to Oregon. Look out, Sal Garcia did hold up his swing. He'll appeal to first base. But a good check. And you mentioned the top five. Once these guys get going, we saw it in that New York regional championship game in which they threw 19 runs at them. It's a buzzsaw. I think you heard from the coach Jairo Labrador talking about just where calm pitch, down go. we're going to score runs let's not panic let's keep things one under control comes out only. he said one guy comes out only I just told him yo only the next guy up Dave you can't come out if it gets by no outs J.R. Rosado off speed pitch, swings and misses. Once he gets that going, I think the fastball for Price is his bread and butter, but that breaking ball, when he throws it for strike, that's what's going to make him tough. Ooh. Rosado has claimed to have a natural cannon, a strong arm since he was a little kid. He surprised his older brothers, Jonathan and Jacob, with just how hard he threw. And there's a good chance we'll see JR on the mound at some point here in Williamsport. See what he does at 02. Fouls it out. Oh, One wow. Of your favorite times of the night right here. In central Pennsylvania, the hill really has not had to deal with any rain or precipitation today, so it's starting to get a little slipperier for those cardboard oh. sliders. If you like baseball and you like Little League Baseball, <laughs> and you like to dance, come to Williamsport. <laughs> An interesting delivery price. He's kind of slow until the last second, and then he accelerates, and you got to be really ready as the plate. Those are the guys, for me, that were always tough to hit, that slow motion, but then coming at you with a quick arm speed makes you want to commit to the fastball. See J.R. Rosado right on the dish. The crowd on the plate. Off speed, right field. That's where Sullivan Puckett is, and an easy out. So Rosado 0 for 2 as he flies out to right, and here's another chance for Yadi Mateo. And these are two of the bigger kids at this Little League World Series. Gavin Price at 5'8", 129. And Mateo, who singled to right his first time up at 5'11". 231 pounds. Mm. Definite presence in the box. Nice, calm swing. Swing and a drive, right center field, and Yadi Mateo is popped out. Sliding catch by Sullivan Puckett. Mateo probably knew he didn't get it because he was sprinting to first base, but it exploded off his bat. Just gets a little bit extended. Sullivan Puckett there to make the grab. Ball just died, a little bit of the wind yeah, coming in. You can feel it. Really feel it, the flags. Nice little slide knee grab by Sullivan out there in right field, but a little bit of catching it out front, a little bit of that wind knocking it down. Just foul from Jaden Capendisa. You're right, just as he hit that ball, you see those big flags in center field and above 
started blowing in, and all of a sudden in the booth you could feel it. And you wonder if it got up high enough that it just killed it. Another one, same spot, and behind 0-2. That's what makes me tell, that's what tells me that Gavin Price's fastball is really sneaky. Guys have been out in front of that breaking ball, and the fastball is beating a lot of these hitters. So a leadoff walk, Sal Garcia stands there at first base after two pop-outs to right. Hey. Off speed on the corner, called strike three. So they will have the leadoff man stranded. A little noise off the bat of Mateo, but it ends up in the glove of Puckett. If he's going to throw this backdoor breaking ball for strikes, they're going to have a long night. This is a tough pitch to hit. That is nasty. We'll sit again next year, Red Sox and Orioles. Our coverage starts 5.30 Eastern time. We'll have baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown on ESPN as well as the ESPN app. Henry Moon struck out. That's... Uh, how he started his first inning, and then he grounded into a 6-4 force, and here comes brother oh. Andrew, who struck out his first time up. Hey, Carl, I talked to the Moon's mom, Michelle, actually, and I said, tell me something about the twins. And she said, oh, it's really cute. They're very close. They share the same bedroom. They, they play on the same team, same school, same classes. She said the one thing they did not want to be together in, P.E. They're far too competitive. They're like, no way are we doing that together. <laughs> she said they're together more than a married couple. <laughs> the twins, Andrew and Henry Moon. This is Andrew, number eight. There's and mom. there's mom. Physical Ed, huh? But imagine if they could use those in math and science and just compete that way. Swing and a miss. It's dropped. Throw down to first. And there is the out. So, of course, they're always asked questions. Uh, they both like Will Farrell. Different baseball team, which is good. Andrew, a little more of a country guy. Travis Scott, Blanco Brown for Henry. And if you combine cheeseburger and fries, that's a, that's, great meal. That's a Rossi meal. We'll share it. We'll share it. We'll share it. This whole little league's going to be about me eating. I'm excited. <laughs> Big batter Gavin Price with one down in the bottom of the third, leading two to one. Oh. Seen a little bit them just pitching away when they go in seems to be the most contact that he's given up that fastball in as you see him set up here jr back there behind the plate setting up in i feel like with that crossbody delivery that mateo has you're playing into that swing be one of these oregon hitters a little bit stepping in the bucket because of that crossbody delivery you want to stay down away it makes it the toughest angle to make contact this ball is into right and it gets down they're respecting the power of price and he is aboard his first hit that was a beautiful swing ball out over throwing the bat throwing the barrel at the ball nice job staying behind it a little bit out in front standing up on it but just throws his hands to the ball Nice base hit. You see how he's opened up there. That ball up, able to drive it to right. Thomas Van Bishler will bat now for Spencer Shorts. It was Shorts who got the whole thing started in the last inning as they strung together four consecutive hits. And that one off the glove of Rosado and now into scoring position goes Gavin Price. A little cross up there perhaps? So I, a little bit confused by that one. It's hard to get crossed up. Maybe just didn't see nobody on second base. I don't know if they're using any multiple signs. But I have forgotten what I've put down before this catcher. <laughs> oh. The throw oh, got the him. second and they got him. Wow. Yachty is such a big body on that mound. I'm not even sure that Gavin Price saw the ball heading in his direction. And heads this up is, play. Yeah, heads up baseball here. Just looks like he's throwing it back to Yadi Mateo. J.R. Rosado 
Nice job just throwing it all the way. Great strong arm from his knees right to second base. What a play. Big second out. And that eliminates the runner in scoring position. That one inside. Just falls to his knees. Watch how nonchalant just throwing it back. Waits on his middle infield to get there. Boom. What a play. Nice throw by JR from behind the plate. Smart, whoever called that. And again, that big body of Mateo probably blinds you a little bit. And that one gets by, and there's a walk. When you talked about it, Sal Garcia, the shortstop, has to be heads up there going. JR waits on him to get there. These guys have done that before. That play's been used before. That was nice. Nicely set up. Yachty even gave a little fake with his glove, like, am I supposed to jump for that ball? <laughs> Brady Strenke will get a chance to bat as the substitute players being used by Oregon right now. And the outfield shifts heavy to right center field and the left fielder Nunez moves way over as well. Josiah Sharp, fairly shallow and right. So is the center fielder, Labrador. That wind is really picking up now. down the middle another strikeout for Mateo he's got five of them now and he was aided by a heads-up play by his catcher and his shortstop sell me some Yachty boom sell me some Yachty boom <laughs> Virginia no hit Rhode Island. They use three pitchers, none of whom threw over 35 pitches. They'll play again Sunday and have every pitcher available. South Korea, 10 runs. They take care of Venezuela. They are rolling. Minnesota wins its first Little League World Series game since 2007. A terrific victory over the Great Lakes team. Japan dominates Italy, and they look strong again. And Hawaii trying to defend after Honolulu won the whole thing last year. They're trying to do it again this year. Mexico just finished shutting out Canada. As day two set to conclude here in Williamsport at the Little League World Series. South Williamsport, Lomity Stadium. And the bracket looks like this. The winner side, Kurosawa, South Korea, 9 a.m. Eastern time. We start a little early on Sunday, given that the Major League Baseball players are flying in from Pittsburgh and they get a chance to see the games, meet the players. And then they head over to Bowman Field to play their game at night. Virginia, Minnesota, Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. And Hawaii gets the winner of this one. Currently, Oregon at 2 o'clock Eastern time. And that one will be on ABC. Here we go with Derek Escobar in the top of the fourth inning. Ball. New Jersey's had a base runner in each of the first three innings. They scored their lone run in the second. This is where all the trouble started with all the walks. Escobar drives that one to center field. Van Kempen, oh, oh, it's off his glove. He had it right on the track and now into second. And there with a double is Derek Escobar. Always hard for the outfielder. You start to feel that dirt under your feet. You don't know how much more you have to go. And it just went off the glove of Cameron Van Kempen. Cameron goes back just out of his reach. Pulls up a hair short. You're right, long way to go. This ball is driven to center. Wind blowing in. It's just off the tip. Almost snow cones that ball. Great effort there by Cameron. So New Jersey back in business. And Jamie Tamayo, we saw him come in as a special pinch runner. Now he gets a chance to swing. Ball. Square to bunt, it gets by, there's no, did they call the foul ball? I didn't think he tipped. Totally missed that. 
Home plate umpire heard something and he immediately called that play dead. Let's see if the ball hits the bat. It's really hard to tell from that angle. But umpire was right on it and yeah. immediately indicated foul ball. So Escobar goes back. There you go. There you go. Bunting a little bit tough. We hadn't seen any great bunts get down for sacrifices so far this tournament. This Little League World Series. We've had some good bunt attempts for base hits get down. And after failing to get that bunt down to Mayo, strikes out. Third straight inning that New Jersey's had the leadoff hitter aboard. Uh, Sante Alvarez, another substitute player. They got one more, LJ Aponte, and they will have satisfied their substitute player responsibilities. 13 players on this New Jersey team. And 13 on Oregon. Hey! That's poured in there for a strike. Good pitch from Price. Let's go down to Julie. Carl, I am with Gavin Price's mom, Larissa. Gavin walks into this game at the pitching's mound with bases loaded, zero outs. How are you feeling about that moment? You know, I, I can't describe the feeling, but he's done it so many times. He just has to be himself. And I know he'll be okay. Does, does he get that calmness from mom? I don't, that's what everyone says, but I mean, he, he, he just walks right in. I mean, I'd be crying if I were him, and he just strolls right out there super calm, and he loves it. Speaking of crying, you did share with me, and I'm allowed to share this yes, on TV, yes. that Gavin, you said, hadn't cried since he was three years old. He cried since he was a toddler, and when they won and knew they were coming here, he, his, his, he was crying for a half an hour. I mean, just with little tears in his eyes. He was so excited, so happy. Well, I know you must be so proud yeah. to see Salem, Oregon as well oh in their gosh. first ever Little League World Series. Our whole town has just supported us. People that I don't even know are sending me congratulations. It's amazing. It's so awesome. That's what happens. Enjoy. And you get interviewed by Julie Foudy. I mean, it's a, it's a oh. glorious time for Salem, Oregon. Escobar now heads back to second, and he gets back there safely. Probably a good job by Riley Wilson not to throw it away, although they had like eight guys backing up to see that. They were ready. That was a nice job base running as well, going back to second, making that throw as tough as possible from Riley Wilson. The long throw, he, if he would have tried to go to ahead to third, he would have been out. And tough to score from second base on a hit, given where the infield and outfield are playing, and they won't have to worry about that. The lineup is hurt again. Once again, the leadoff man on, and the Price family all fired up. Welcome back, everyone. This is Lomity Stadium in all its glory tonight, and we are witnessing a well-played, well-pitched Little League baseball game. The team from Salem, Oregon, up 2-1 to one over the team from the Mid-Atlantic region. They call themselves the Troopers, and why they call themselves the Troopers has to do with a picture of that guy. It's all in honor of Thomas Hanratty. The field that they play on is named in his honor. He was a lifelong Elizabethan, and he played youth baseball for Elmora. New Jersey State Trooper who was killed by a car during a routine traffic stop. He was only 24 years young. And they do wear the badge number on their sleeves during the regular season. It's badge number 4971. And we know a bunch of New Jersey State Troopers have made their way here. And this was the scene on the field before the game. There's a tremendous amount of pride in that town and in the troopers and Raddy's picture is hanging in the state police station when you walk in you see it a terrible terrible tragedy which took his life at such a young age and they honor him and they play for a lot more than just the kids that are on this field and they made sure that when they got here they reminded themselves of that Sullivan pocket frustrated after that swing and a miss. One and two. They move Joel Sanchez behind the plate. Oh. That 
one misses. Sanchez is a little different. Hasn't been pitching, uh, hasn't been catching for very long. They really thought that they were going to need, because Rosado's a catcher, but he also pitches, they're going to need somebody who can catch Yachty and JR. So they got Sanchez back there, and he's really come a long way in a short period of time. They thought they were going to need another catcher. You're right. And what I love about it is he didn't even make this team last year, didn't make the All Star team. A guy that didn't complain, he put in the work. And look where he's at now. He's at the Little League World Series behind the plate in game one. Really cool story about hard work and how it pays off. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, I got him. I got him. Three and two. Bucket had a hit and was stranded at third base. Got stuck in that 7-5 double play. Here he is in a 3-2. Look out. Oh. Someone almost got him, and that's a walk from Mateo. I want to remind everybody, the Little League Grow the Game grant initiative has distributed over $4 million to local Little League programs, providing funding, facility repairs, and improvement, and help to expand or establish softball challenger division and urban initiative programs. For more info, visit littleleague.org slash grow the game. Feels like the energy after that big double play when New Jersey had a threat going has kind of been sapped from that entire left side of the stadium as well as the team. Yeah, it just kind of hit a lull, and I think it starts with Yadi Mateo. A little bit of his body language, tough time for the first time. Him probably getting hit around a little bit, giving up some runs. This is their guy, and when you see a little bit of the, the armor get kind of dinged up, a little bit of adversity for the first time. Oh. Eight of the last 12 Oregon batters have reached base, Rossi, and this is Jacob Hoda. He swings and fouls that one off. They've been really patient, making him throw strikes. Really good at bats, fouling off a lot of those tough pitches. The good pitches they have fouled off and made him execute another pitch. That is a pitcher's nightmare. It is tough to do, continue to execute over and over again, these tough pitches. And he pitches in. I, I've, I've watched all night him. He, he's comfortable on that side of the plate, which I think is extremely tough to do. Coming in again. Hoda stays alive as he fouls that one off and adds another to the pitch total. It's a big inning here in a 2-1 game. You have nine and then the top of the order coming up in the fifth inning, and that's where New Jersey does most of its damage with those top five hitters. So they have to be thinking that 2-1 is about as bad as they want it to be going into the fifth. Hoda swings and misses. Batter is out. Runner can head to second base, and he does on the ball that got out. past the catcher. That was a nasty pitch. Setting up with the fastball in on those tough fastballs he was fouling off, then bringing in that breaking pitch. That was nice. See here, look at this, the spike curveball. We've seen it a couple times tonight for strikeouts. That's the one makes it extremely hard, especially with these hitters bailing out on that front side. Aiden Sale steps to the plate. He'll be the last of the substitute players. For Washington, as the wind continues to howl, blowing straight in from center field. And a little blooper, diving oh, nice. catch. What a play. They got a double play at second base. Jaden Capendisa gets it done. What a play by Jaden. This ball is not hit hard enough for him to read it opposite. Opposite field from the right-handed batter. Just a jam shot. Watch him lay out for this thing. What a play. And then the wherewithal to throw it to second. Double play. Now the energy's back on this side. <laughs> and the big boys are coming to the plate. Eight champions and down to our final 16 in the world. Our Honda game summary 2-1 and a whole bunch of uh, base runners for both teams. And yet only three runs across. Four of the first seven reached two of ten since for New Jersey. Part of that has to do with the man on the mound, Gavin Price, who's been locked down as he begins the fifth inning. And this is the inning, it feels like, for New Jersey. You'll start it off with L.J. Aponte in the nine spot, batting for the first time, and then back to the top. Oh.
Gavin Price has just been a savior for this group, pouring it in there. If he can get through this inning, it is looking good for the Oregon crew. Oh. Got that breaking ball working last inning, saw a couple punch outs. Three two at last three innings. New Jersey's had the leadoff man aboard. On the ground, a second fielded cleanly. Henry Moon one down. You can see there is just a calmness around Price on that mound and the presence given his size. This game was started by Cameron Van Kempen. And it felt like he checked himself out of it. That allowed Price to go on the mound. If things worked out, they got the lead. And he has given up nothing. One hit. Sal Garcia. Hey! Inside corner, strike one. Seems like it happens a lot when you see this turn. The coach's son usually has the most poise. Been around the game. Dad's just loving the game, always talking baseball with their sons. Bright, probably, if I know from experience, the hardest on their kid when it comes to performance and having having the right attitude in the right situations. So you have experience in that. I, 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 and your I, son I, does. I, I, yeah, my son does. I don't know that I do, but my son definitely does. Two and one. Garcia to be followed by J.R. Rosado and Yadi Mateo if they get there. Well, now you're in a little bit of trouble. Three and one. So bread and butter for New Jersey has not produced yet tonight. The one through four hitters, one for seven. And a good pitch there to battle back. Fouled off by Garcia. Yeah, they're the ones that are going to have to carry this group. You're exactly right, Carl. Hit some balls hard. We've had some great defensive plays. Base running mistakes. Rip down the line. Fair ball. Garcia on his way to second base, and that's a big hit. He's... Now putting the brakes on. <laughs> and the crowd erupts. Opens a shirt like Superman. He's feeling it. Mom likes it. Out in front of this breaking ball here. Down the line. Just throwing the hands again. Just keeping it fair. Running hard out of the box. There it is. Open it. Let's see that chest. Here comes the crowd. Gavin Price calmly picks up the rosin bag. 0 for 5, runners in scoring position. Hey. Number 9 is J.R. Rosado, a strikeout and a pop out to right. Center fielder is really deep, right fielder really shallow, and the left fielder playing deep as well. Sullivan Puckett looked over at his fellow outfielders and said, I'm not moving. Yeah. That is a swing. Rosado in an 0-2 hole. It's almost when Gavin Price gets guys on, he just takes it up just a notch. That breaking ball gets a lot sharper, starts in the middle of the plate. Nice swing. Went with a fastball and couldn't get it by him. So Garcia at second with that big double. He's the tying run. Oh, two strikes. Hey! Popped up. Center fielder playing really deep, coming hard. He won't get there. And now Garcia takes off, heads to third. High throw. He stays, and back to second base goes Rosado. We talked just how deep Cameron Van Kempen was playing, and he had no chance to get to that ball. 
You just said it, Carl, playing super deep in center, but the mistake here is on Andrew Moon, just thinking it's gonna be hit a little bit further. We've talked about the wind blowing in, knowing where your outfields are. He points right away. You gotta get it. You gotta go out if you're a middle infielder there. Either Henry Moon or Andrew Moon have to go out and give that ball a shot. That's their ball to catch. They're going to intentionally walk Yadi Mateo to load the bases up. And the crowd didn't like it, but it's a move that makes sense. First base open and that power threat in a one-run game. I'm not pitching to him if I'm trying to win. I talked to Timmy a little bit about, you know, walking kids in Little League, just sending the wrong message. But either you're going to put him on and make it quick or... You're going to set up the other batter's box and walk. I'm not letting Yadi Mateo beat me for sure. Jaden Capandisa, he was the guy that started that great double play at the plate. And that's lined into center field. Garcia in from third. Rosado heads home. New Jersey leads it by a run. That ball goes off Mateo. He heads to second and down to third, I should say, into second goes Jaden Capandisa. And this place is going crazy. Single and two RBIs after the intentional walk to Mateo. Jaden Capandisa is going to start tonight. That great double play. And then the two RBIs here with the speed of Garcia and Rosado. How many times do you see it at this level? You start throwing the ball around too much. Playing catch is at a premium in this game. And at this level, they are excited. They're locked in. The fans are going crazy. Parents are going crazy. Everybody is shaking inside this stadium <laughs> right now. Twenty-one out there at second base, got a big smile on his face, and he deserves it. Jaden Capandisa, huge tonight. That double play to end the last half, and then the big hit there to score two to put New Jersey on top. Special pinch runner in there for Yadi Mateo. Sal Garcia goes over to talk to him to kind of calm him down. You bring in the fastest player on the team to be a special pinch runner, and Josiah Sharp leading by a run makes a lot of sense. Nice for stop. Big play by Riley Wilson back there. Infield halfway. We talked about it, Rossi. Getting to the top of this order, and all of a sudden, after going one for seven, a double, a double, the intentional walk, and a single. Oh. I think he felt like it was just a matter of time before the big boys started swinging the bats, but we thought it would be. Yadi Mateo, but it seems to be everybody else. JR, Garcia, Jaden. This top five is relentless. Their at bats are good. And another one again there from Derek Escobar. Crowd chants, Hoosta. That's what the nickname of Justin Labrador is as he comes to the plate with the bases loaded, the infield in. One man down and two runs in. A lot of times at Little League, the infield comes in and you see the hitter hit one on the dirt over the head of the draw in infield for a hit. I've seen that a number of times. The outfielders are finally moving in, but again, I think that center fielder is playing pretty deep. Guys are starting to creep in a little bit. Wind is howling in. Fouled at the plate. Sharps coming in, but the ball was fouled. The 
It is as loud as it's been at hey. Lombardy all day and night. They're on their feet over here on the left side. Ooh. Watch your lips. Oh, great job of turning to the inside part of part of the ball. That is a that's how you're supposed to turn, kids. Hey. Only 10 years old, Justin Labrador. Side. Good on the dirt. Let's go. No place to put him. A walk brings in another run. As aggressive as this New Jersey team is, they give you a good at bat. They swing it, pitches in the zone, know the strike zone. Time called. Sharp tying his shoe down there at third base. Jaden Capandisa was huge at the regionals. And he is delivered again tonight with that double to put his team, a single to put his team ahead. Here's the 3 2. Shallow right field. Puckett went back and it drops in front of him. One comes in. That's a single for Labrador. And a lead grows to 4 2. Looks like Sullivan Puckett just didn't get a good read on it. He stepped back and the ball with that wind. Dropped in front of him. You've seen these outfielders a couple times now. Just these balls off the bat look like they're going to go. First breaking back. Ball just absolutely dies. Tough read. Starts to come in and just sees he can't take, take a dive at it. Lets it fall in front. Everybody's safe. Base hit and another good at bat. Out of boy, Hoops! Out of boy! That's a proud dad right there. Ten-year-old Justin Labrador Husta, his nickname is the boy Hoos. He delivers. Just doesn't feel like a lot of this is on Gavin Price, and it looks like they are still going to make a pitching change, and they are. So Price is going to come out, and Carson McNally is going to come in. 67 pitches. Price coming out. So as we stay here during the warm-up pitches, we'll send it down to Julie. I'm actually here with Jaden's mom, Chris. Christy, Jaden does starts the double play in the fourth inning to get out of that inning. Then he has the hit that brings in the go-ahead run in the fifth inning. How proud are you as a mom right now? I am so proud of him, and he's jumping around on the field right now. I just want to show you a picture. I took this picture three years ago and put it up on the board, and now he's actually here. <laughs> you can see that it says my dream is for my son to make it to the little league world series how about that and here he is yes it's so exciting we know we knew we'd get here eventually but just to actually be here doing it is great and to see the way this team has rallied from being down the energy of this group what's special about this team um, we might not do it right at the beginning but once we start the rally we get going and we have all the community around us as you can see we have hundreds of people here and that's what gets them going. There's a lot of good New Jersey energy going on in this stadium. Congratulations. Enjoy the rest of it. Thank you. There's Jaden out there. You can see it and you can hear it. That's got to be super intimidating by the, if you're on the other team. This is a lot of people here cheering this group. This inning three for three with runners in scoring position from New Jersey. They get that energy and they start to feed off of it. Carson McNally is on the mound and he lobs one in there for a ball to Yamil Soto. One and one. Captain Deason just to few feet away from Hyro Labrador, the manager of this team. Screaming instructions into Soto at the plate. Back up the middle. Good swing there from Soto. Down! Down! Let's go! Hey! Leave it up! Leave anything up! up. Is 
drop. There's only one out. That should be an infield fly rule, and it is. The runner is tagged out. That would be the third out. Did the run score first? I think the run did cross. The batter's out. And I think they tagged Escobar. I don't know if he scored first. The, uh, the home plate umpire, I think, has him scoring. But he ran out of the baseline. It depends on... Let's see here. Let's see if he was tagged. As soon as this ball's up there, that's an infield fly rule. But he's out as soon as he runs out of the baseline. So he goes to tag him right here, and he runs out. He's out right there. This run should not score. And that should be three outs. They didn't call him out. No. He's standing on third. Should have been the third out. How is he not out? It feels like Escobar at third should be out. Yeah. What we got here? A little uh, wardrobe shoe, shoe issue. So understand, bases were loaded with one out. Pop-up infield fly rule was called for the second out, and then there was no call on the running out of the base, and he didn't tag him. No, he didn't tag him. So it must be in the umpire's discretion that there was no running out of the baseline, but as you said, that was clear to avoid the tag. He ran all the way onto the grass. In any event, the fifth run has scored. There's still two down. Oh. That one gets away, and Escobar is safe. We know how intimidating this this intimidating this crowd can be and see a little bit of the game speeding up here for Oregon. Just a tough pitch. Nice try there by Riley Wilson. He's blocked a lot of tough balls all day and actually makes a great play on a wild pitch to almost get the base runner at home plate. Another nice stop by Riley. He has worked his butt off here tonight, keeping balls in front. Just kicks off his glove, that last one. Joel Sanchez with a runner down there at third base. Amaya, who came in as a special pinch runner for Justin Labrador. So five runs in the inning and now a 6-2 lead for New Jersey in the top of the fifth. I think Jaden's mom hit it right on the head. This group gets going. They feel the energy. They feed off the adrenaline. All right, Rossi, let's go back to that play where the infield fly, you can see the third base umpire calls it immediately. Watch him. And then the question is, is the runner from second out of the baseline? He calls it right there. First base and third base umpire both call it. Infield fly, batters out. Well, that's way out. And the that's baseline. way out of the baseline. He should be out. Nobody was paying attention after. Yeah, there's no tag saying he's out of the baseline. Shortstop knew it. Andrew Moon knew that he was out of the baseline. He should be out. Sharp try to bunt for a hit. So a lot going on in that inning. There was, but it should really be 5-2 in the inning. Should be over. Yes. That run did score before he was would have been called out, or was it not? I didn't think it was. No? If you call him out as soon as he avoids the tag and gets out of the baseline, I think the runner was about a step and a half from scoring at home plate for me. Wasn't called, not relevant. Six to two. New Jersey leading Oregon. Nickname Wheels. That'd be a good nickname. He can fly. Were you ever Wheels? No. <laughs> Flat tire? Twinkie. <laughs> <laughs> well, five big runs for the team from Elmore Youth Little League out of New Jersey. They started mashing with Garcia, Rosado, Mateo got involved, Jaden Capandisa doing the dance. The Jersey Shuffle on display Friday night in Williamsport at the Little League World Series and a crooked number of five spot. Attendance over 17,000. Tonight, we expect big crowds tomorrow as well, and Sunday for the Major League Baseball Little League Classic Day. Oh. 
Well, Mateo was a hot mess when he came off the field when a special pinch runner went in for him, and now he's back on the mound. We'll see if he's a little calmer and more collected. This one on the ground to short. Garcia, easy play. Hasn't been a lot of contact for the fielders to make outs. A lot of strikeouts and then balls, either walks or other. You haven't seen a lot of the good defense, and it is a good defensive team. That play by Capandisa, the double play, helped a great deal. Yeah, Coach Hiro talked about their D, how they love their Latin style D. They got some flair. Ball. Referenced the great Francisco Lindor yes. style, yeah. So that's high praise there. That's the uh, favorite player of the shortstop we just saw out there. And Sal Garcia, Francisco Lindor. No foul ball. They caught the umpire a little bit. Give him a breather. And he gives him a tap on the shoulder. Thanks to the catcher, Joel Sanchez, for giving a little break. This one popped up, and it is blowing towards the screen, and it is high up on the screen. Adi Mateo has thrown 62 pitches. Labradoris in right field. He had that big single last inning, part of the five runs they scored. And look out. Ball. You're right, Rossi. It is difficult I, to throw inside. He lives in there. I don't get it. I really don't. I don't understand pitching in as much as he has, especially every one of these Oregon hitters seem to step in the bucket a little bit. You're giving them a, a, a better chance to make contact. If you can get that crossbody delivery and focus down away and start to execute that with the breaking ball he has, be unhittable. Hi. It's hard to drive the ball to right field as well. Goal for Yadi Mateo to throw strikes. You got a four run lead, six outs away. And use that great defense we were talking about. Pitch to contact. Five outs away with one down here. And another one high and tight, so Andrew Moon has to bail out of the way. And with that 66th pitch, we know that we will not see Mateo throw for at least four days. That's the required rest. This one on the ground to him. He goes to his knees. He'll go to first, and he makes the play. Good job by Yadi to gather himself, and that strong arm helped him there. Yeah, that's usually we see panic set in. Getting down on the knee, keeping the ball in front was one thing, but then kind of keeping his poise as it kicks off his glove to throw a strike to first base. Right here, going down, see he's got to make the play, goes down, tries to keep in front, a little bit of a bobble, but doesn't panic. Using that strong arm, like you said. JR! Hey, hey, give me a big old hug. Look at me, and go, go dig a ball out in the dirt somewhere, and go make a play for us, all right? Give me a kiss, too. Let's go, come on. Let's go. Absolutely. Cool. Let's go. Coach, Let's go. can I get a hug too? <laughs> can I get one of those? So they're going to take Yadi Mateo out. And one thing about this team, they do have some deep pitching. And a crowd chance for Yadi. Just check the scoreboard has 67 pitches, and again, once you go over 65, you have 20 to throw. We want to make sure the official number is correct. And he started the last batter with 66, so Yadi Mateo taken out, and that may be just as much about who's on the mound now as it is where Yadi was. Nice night for Yadi Mateo here. Here's his highlight reel. The breaking ball was effective early on. Got the strikeout on the spike breaking ball. That's when he did his most damage. Get that crossbody delivery, and then he set it all up with a fastball in. It's Let tough it when he's Let throwing that heater in, that breaking ball. That thing starts right at you. No doubt about it. And now the line for Mateo, four and two-thirds. 
He'll be eligible to pitch after the four days rest on Wednesday, six Ks and three walks. A long tournament. And you're going to need all your pitchers. They're pretty confident in their pitching depth, like you said, Carl. These guys got arms for days, they feel like. Guys that throw hard know how to pitch. Yachty's just one of that big group. Rosado is a terrific pitcher. His favorite player, the great Hall of Famer Mariano Rivera. 1-0, uh, 19 Ks in eight innings of work. Ooh, ooh wee. You'll see a fastball and a breaking ball. That's why they took Rosado out and put Sanchez behind the plate so that he was eligible to pitch in this game. He'll take over with two down. He'll have to deal with Big Gavin Price, who singled his last time up. Mateo moves over to first. Emil Soto to second. And here's Rosado's first offering. Fastball right by him and a good pitch. This could be sort of the 20 pitch. Well, he's got 35 if they win the game. Rosado. And they set up way outside, and how about Ooh. that? One, two, three. How you doing? That's why it may have been as much about Rosado, but apparently some frustration from the manager when he realized I could have left. Welcome back, everyone. New Jersey's got a 6-2 lead. We head to the last inning, top of the six. New Jersey made that pitching change. They took Yadi Mateo out, figuring that it would be a three-day rest or a four-day rest. You get to 65, and... This is what happened when Jairo Labrador realized, wait a sec, I was wrong on the count. He could have stayed in the game because he had already exceeded the 65 pitch threshold. Right, bro. That's it. All right? Hey, hey, listen, nobody. We, I messed up. That's it. We're good. We're good. Tamo bien, papi. Let's go. Ciao. Tamo bien. We're good, big dog. Don't let this eat you. So the delicate balance between intensity and all that and uh, body language and behavior and enthusiasm, they, they tow it a little bit on that New Jersey team, at least in this game they do. Avery Lorman now on for Oregon. The rooster. The roost. <laughs> Because of that big inning, you're back to the top of the order and Sal Garcia, he swings and misses at that. He got everything started with that big double down the line in the fifth. And a rooster strikes out Sal Garcia for the first out in the sixth. A nice breaking ball there from the rooster. <laughs> You know, the beauty, too, we talk about how they all speak the same language of baseball, and I'm just thinking back to the way that Hawaii and their managers handled the meetings on the mound and how kind of calm everything was and just how different the approach is for New Jersey. Not saying it's better or worse, but it's just so different. Yeah, so different. And, and, and it, you're talking about different, you know, regions where they come from and, I mean, island life versus Jersey life, probably a little different, but you're exactly right. Each personality is different. These kids are having the time of their lives. Coaches want it so bad for the kids. I've been there. It's like when you're just watching the game like I am here and don't have any kid or skin in the game, it's so much easier to be calm. When my son's playing, I'm a nervous wreck. Right. That one did not uh, do anything but hit Rosado. He didn't move. He's down to first base with a hit batter. Avery Lorman's going to go over there and say I'm sorry about that. Australia, Venezuela gets things started tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern time. It's Kentucky and Rhode Island, the United States. These are elimination games. So the Little League World Series, your chance to win a championship ends tomorrow for some of these teams. And again, it will be either New Jersey or Oregon. 
that's the thing about what you guys do, you know, and college teams too. Once you leave Little League, you leave the culture you grew up in. And now you're going to be asked to go into major league clubhouses or college environments. And you're coming from all different parts of the globe. And you've got to all mix and match cool. and make sure it works. It's one of my favorite parts about this event and seeing these kids up there getting to know each other, making friends. We, we saw earlier in the thing in the broadcast where Yadi Mateo just loves to make new, make new friends, and that's what this is all about. These kids interact with one another. They high-five each other even when they give up home runs. It just really is such a great environment. Good sportsmanship. Yadi Mateo gives this one a ride deep to right field at the wall. It is caught out there by Sullivan Puckett. That was close. Yadi, like two times I hit it pretty well, and he's got <laughs> nothing to show for it but a couple of long outs. Take a look at those flags, Yadi. It's tough tonight. Tough going deep to right, especially right. Sullivan Puckett right up against that wall back there. Almost robs that thing. He wasn't playing so deep. Capendisa hits this one on the line to center field, and there's Price, and that is the third out. Bottom six coming up. Three outs away is New Jersey from winning its first as Oregon tries to root its team to a rally. Okay, we've gone shut piece, even in the Superman <laughs> uni. <laughs> Find me a pillow. Wake up, dugout. Seventh and final game of this very busy day and night of the Little League World Series. We get set for the weekend and we have been moving and shaking and yelling and screaming and flossing and doing a lot of that. Oh, you know, Brooklyn Dodger shirt on. I like that. Jackie Robinson. New Jersey leading Oregon, bottom six. And how good has J.R. Rosado looked to see thrown four pitches and all of them have hummed in there as strikes. Filling up the strike zone. He is getting it and going. Ball exploding out of his hand. Hi. Spencer Shorts calls time. Five, six, and seven. This has been a part of the order that did the damage in the second inning, and it was Shorts who got it started. Off speed, slow roll. It's a tough play. Escobar. Across, Mateo, did he hold the bag? Yes, says the first base umpire. That may be one that Oregon wants to look at. Great tackle over there by Yadi Mateo. <laughs> this ball, good play. Derek Escobar has to throw it. Goes down to get it. Nice job. Keeps his foot on the bag yeah. right there. Yeah. Nice job. It's a tough play. Good play by Escobar there at third, one down. Whew. Strike one. So you'll see J.R. Rosado start a game, if not more than one. Having seen Mateo, there is Rosado. Ooh. That is gas. Capandisa also a pitcher. Mm. Only off-speed pitch he's thrown the one that got put in play. That fastball is electric from JR. Ball is exploding out of his hand. Tough deception, another guy. This guy's ace their staff for sure. Yes, he is. He described that arm as a natural cannon. Is that accurate? <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. Boy, the New Jersey fans are having a party. No, one thing, I wouldn't want to be staying at that hotel tonight. <laughs> I wanted to get some sleep. This is only their first game. Yeah. This is why you need a good catcher, Rossi. How difficult would it be to catch somebody like Rosado, understanding he's accurate? Yes. I, I think, too, that's what you fall into and how you can lose a game when you got a really good pitcher and a guy that can't catch anybody gets on. Yeah. That's good guys in scoring position fast when balls start getting by you. 3 1, and takes a deep breath, settles himself, but that's a walk. Yeah. 
If New Jersey wins, they'll play again on Sunday. Break one. Two. An awful lot of talent on that team from New Jersey as they have rallied and scored five in that fifth. And now we're a strike away from moving on in the winner's bracket. And there it is. Rosado slams the door. And New Jersey gets the win to open up their 2019 Little League World Series. J.R. Rosado just bringing the cheese. Here it comes. I'm tired of messing around, ready to go home. Four-seam fastball, middle, middle. And that's a W for the New Jersey team. Jaden Capendisa was outstanding. Rosado closed the door. And New Jersey advances. They will take on Hawaii. You'd like to see Rosado take on that Hawaii team? How would that look on a Sunday at 2 Eastern time? I'm in on that. All in. And then we get to see the Little League Classic right after that. Pretty special with the Cubs and the Pirates. Virginia, Minnesota gets things started Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. But we will be back here tomorrow. Our Little League coverage begins tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. Sports Center at 10. Up next, the UFC 241 preview. After 11 hours and five minutes for our entire crew, Carl Rabbit, so long, everybody.